Welcome to the uh, Just a Guitar uh, live Saturday show, uh, which we've rekindled again. I, I used to do a live stream quite a few years ago, um, but uh, kind of went a bit weird when I had lots of other commitments and stuff, and I started stopping and starting and stopping and starting and kind of died around a bit. So um, the point of these shows, just so we're clear now, again, I mentioned this a little earlier, but officially the show started now. So... Uh, uh, the idea is that it's a two-hour show. The first hour is mainly going to be for beginners, people that are doing the course at the moment. I'm doing a guided course now this year, and I'm going to be doing a few more of these. So if you're just into learning guitar or you want to you know, go back through the course again, uh, this week and the next two weeks going to be about for stage one beginner guitar players. So that is like really super simple strumming and only A, D and E chord, right? And I'm spending a lot more time in the forum helping those guys out. I'm making little improvements on the course. So if you've got some feedback for me, if you're doing the course, you're doing the, the, the beginner's course and you're on stage one, you've got a difficulty with something, let me know because now is the perfect time and I'm going to allow a whole hour for beginners, right? to ask questions and remember that there's no such thing as a as a stupid question, just a stupid teacher, right? So if you don't understand something, it's my fault. It's not your fault. I need to explain myself better. Now's your chance to kind of tell me how you're going with it, what you're enjoying, what you're not enjoying. You know, I've got some pretty massive improvements on the way very soon for the beginner's course, but I wanted to uh, have, have this anyway. Um, there'll be plenty of time for shout outs and asking questions about other stuff um, later on. So let's start off here we've got a question from kim i'm having a hard time with my fingers being sore any tips for that okay so that is the number one problem for beginner guitar players is having sore fingers right that's when you first start out fingertips get really sore i still remember having sore fingertips and i learned on a nylon string guitar to start off with so let me give you a few little hints the first one and i think the most important thing is to be working on a little and often okay so rather than trying to play for like an hour hour at a time or half an hour at a time is to do like five minutes little practice spurts um, and then be happy with doing that you know and, and and have a break for 10 minutes and then come back and do another five minutes have a long break and then you know do five minutes then maybe half an hour off an hour off and then come back and do another five minutes so try and spread your practice out through the day that's first uh, big tip second tip when you're doing stuff like one minute changes which is a really important kind of exercise that um, that many of you want to be doing. You don't need to be pressing real hard when you do that, right? So um, if you're doing my stage one course, you'll know that there's two main exercises that you should be doing for your core practice, which is the most important thing in stage one. And that is the one minute changes, which is all about making fast chord changes. And then you should be doing strum, pick out and strum, which is where you get really good chords good sounding chords right and you're practicing those two things and eventually they'll start to blur together and you'll end up with fast good chords right but it's important that you understand that each of those two things is different and how this relates back to the sore fingers thing is when you're doing your chord changes the fast chord changes you're sitting there going a d a d and you're trying to just do those particular chord changes as fast as you can you don't have to press hard for that because we're not really aiming for getting the chords really crisp we're trying to train the fingers where to go so that it's important that they're going to the right place, right? Really important that they're going to the right place. Um, but you don't feel like you have to press really hard. Whereas if you're doing strum, pick out strum, for example, on the A chord, you're gonna go, and then one at a time. You know, and sit down, and just play this, the notes one at a time. And when you're doing that, you're going to have to press a little harder. Okay, When you're playing songs, you want the chords to sound good, so you're going to have to press a little harder. So just be aware that occasionally, for well, occasionally, for one minute changes at least, you maybe you don't have to press killer hard. You've got to press enough that you're still trying to fret the chord, but don't be punishing yourself up uh, too much on that. Um, other than that, there's not really anything you can do. I've heard lots of stories over the years of, you know, dipping your fingers in this and that helps toughen the... the the skin up and dries the skin up but really I'd, I'm I'm not big on fake sort of stuff like chemicals and stuff I just don't think it sounds like a good idea so um, that would be my recommendation um, for sure would be um, practice little and often and only press as hard as you need to you know remember as well actually um, uh, that finger placement is really important so if you get your finger right next to the fret 
you, it, it, it really helps. You don't, you don't have to press anywhere near as hard. If your finger's right at the back of the fret, like, you know, I can make that note clean, but I really, really have to press hard, right? Whereas if I put my finger right up next to the fret, you know, it, it, I, I can, I'm hardly pressing. I can press, in fact, so lightly that my finger doesn't even go white. Well, it has to just start to go white, you know, when you see your finger go a little bit white. You will get lines, look, you can see, can you see there that I've got, you know, my second finger there has got a bit of a line in it, not much, but you will, you know, you'll always get the little lines in your fingers. Um, in fact, hang on, I do, just because this is kind of interesting, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it or not. I'm just pressing really hard with my A chord, um, just so you can see. Can you see the lines in my fingers there? You're not really, but you can see the first finger, look, it's not directly on, it's sort of pointing upwards. Whereas the line in that one, I'm trying to find a way of catching the light on it, is a little bit more, oh, there we go, if I angle it, it's, it's a little bit more kind of this way. Whereas that on that finger, it's a lot more at that angle. So, you know, don't, I always feel like the line should be going directly across your fingers as well. That was a, a question that I had um, quite often. Um, uh, now, there was another question. I can't I hope that, that helped your problem there, Kim. Uh, there was another question that popped up earlier, which I've not seen. And, and sorry if I'm missing some, some of the questions because um, I, I just can't see them all. I'm hoping I'm going to find a way of saving this chat uh, later so I can check out any, any questions or feedback that I missed. But um, somebody asked about uh, ch playing different guitars. Uh, whether that's a good idea or a bad idea and actually i think having a couple of different guitars is definitely not going to cause you a problem at all um sticking with the one guitar will help you get to know that guitar slightly better like particularly if the uh the spacing is different so between like a nylon string guitar and electric guitar the strings are quite different amounts apart um so you're going to learn to adapt quicker which will help you if you ever go somewhere and play somebody else's guitar for example um and I've never thought of it being a problem for anyone. I guess thinking about it now, you probably m might find it slightly easier sticking on the one guitar. That would be my answer. But there's definitely I wouldn't. If you've got a few guitars, man, don't don't neglect any and make them upset you. I think you're better off, uh, you know, playing all your guitars and just playing the the one that you feel like playing at the time. You know. Um, okay. Uh, Super B has a question. What should be my first electric guitar? Um, I don't know what should be your first electric guitar. Uh, I, I get asked. This is probably that I get asked this question more times than 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 ever before uh, than any other one, which is is um, what guitar should I get? And I and I really don't know. I can't tell you that. You know, um, uh, I, I I think I need to go to a music shop at some point with a camera and go and try out all of the cheap guitars and 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 try and find the one that I think is best between you know at different price brackets. But the problem with that is that you often find guitars that are within, particularly in the kind of more budget instruments, you, you'll have five guitars that are essentially the same guitar, but some will be better than others. So I always recommend um, go to a guitar store, see what ones you like, what do you like the look of, what are you drawn to, you know, are you, do you like the look of Strats or Les Pauls or, um, you know, do you like acoustic guitars, do you like ones that are funny shapes or funny colours or whatever, you know, you've got to find the one that kind of connects with you on a on a spiritual level, man, you know, and, and, and try and just feel, you know, what, what ones do I really like, what are my favourite guitar players like, you know, and then try and get yourself to a guitar store and go and play a few and see which ones you feel like you connect with, you know, and, and try a few really expensive ones as well so you can get a feel for what the difference is between the really expensive guitars and the cheaper guitars because sometimes there's not that much difference you know I've, I've I've played really cheap guitars that play nicer and sometimes even sound nicer than quite expensive guitars you know particularly when you get into vintage markets sometimes you pay a lot of money for a brand or because it's really old or whatever and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a better instrument right so definitely I recommend going to a store and trying to play and I sometimes hear but you know the nearest stores miles away from me it's like well yeah but if you if you're really getting into your guitar you know take the bus take the car whatever and go for a drive and go and test out some instruments you know because I think that's that's really the way to go, you know. If you can, if you're lucky enough to know somebody who plays guitar a bit and who who you like their guitar playing, then uh, uh, then you might want to think about trying to take them along as well, because there's definitely things like um, you know the action of the guitar, like how far the strings are off the fingerboard and that kind of stuff. Um, 
that's pretty important and, and, and somebody who's a more experienced player can probably help you out there in, 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 uh, in choosing stuff, you know. Um, so that's kind of, uh, that's what I think about that. Um, Colm, Colm uh, asks about music theory, saying that it can be a bit daunting. Um, so uh, music theory, uh, I mean, it, it depends. If you're using my theory book, I'm hoping that it's not particularly daunting. Um, uh, so my music, yeah, my music theory is practical and it shows you stuff that, that, that is fun. But again, if you're a stage one early beginner guitar player, you don't want to be thinking too much about music theory just yet, you know. So uh, spend your time at the moment on getting your fingers together and, and, and learning practical stuff. Um, if you wanted to get a bit of theory, you know, if you if you got my practical music theory thing, then you, you might want to check out just the very first few pages about the note circle and, and what the what notes are and what sharps and flats are and how they sit on the fingerboard, that kind of stuff. Really, but really basic stuff, not more than that at, at, at this stage. That's what I am. Um, um, that's what I think. Oh, wow. Hang on. We've got an old school dude here in the house. I don't know how to pronounce his, but I recognize the name Kornyev from 1977 there, Old Jamaica. That was a little song we did a live stream. Wow, that's taken it back. I'm not sure I can remember. Old Jamaica, Sunshine Maker. It was about um, Old Jamaica ginger beer, I think, because I'm a big fan of another type of ginger beer called Bundaberg ginger beer. And so we wrote a song about poor old Old Jamaica. There you go. A little bit random. Um, uh, so begin to try and keep the questions to beginners out. Uh, play, can I play the Hotel California solo is not a beginner question. It just wastes my eyes just now. I'm happy to talk about that stuff later, but please let's try and keep it on track here for beginner questions. Um, I've shared a Google Doc with you, some questions that I've captured from the chat. Keith, big, big thanks here to everyone too, to Keith, DJ Keith, um, who helped out with a, a live stream earlier, who's, who's jumped on board again. Uh, who's doing a great job helping out. So thank you very much, Keith. You know, I really appreciate your help with this sort of stuff. Um, uh, are you going to make a book for reading dots? I am. Uh, I have written a book on reading dots, actually, with a great session guitar player friend of mine called Dario, uh, who is the best reader I know. Uh, and we've finished, the, pretty much finished the book. It's at the publishers at the moment, and he's suggesting how we, we tweet the book to make it a little bit better. So uh, there will be a, a note-reading book uh, coming out uh, very soon. Um, uh, alternate picking, you don't need to worry about that yet for, for beginners. Um, I will try and get all of these questions uh, later. Uh, but but, but try, let, let's just for this first half, half hour give the beginners a bit of space because they always get swamped under by other stuff. Um, do you think that any guitar is easier than any other to learn on electric or acoustic? Okay, so that's... Um, uh, question there from David. Uh, yes, I do think that it's easier to learn on an electric guitar, and I do. There, there is a whole uh, lesson on the as part of my beginner's course on that. Uh, what guitar should you choose? I think is the the lesson in the stage zero. So even before you start the beginner's course, there. Um, the reason is because electric guitar, the strings are usually a little closer to the fingerboard. Um, so uh, and and the strings can be thinner or often thinner when you buy them standard. So they're a little easier to press down. The necks are also a little thinner often as well. Not all the time, but uh, so I think that generally speaking, if somebody says, hey, I want to get a guitar for, you know, learn to play guitar for the first time, what do you recommend? I recommend a, an electric guitar. Um, you get tend to get a bit more bang for your buck as well with electric guitar. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's a little bit more difficult to for a manufacturer to make an acoustic guitar. So uh, budget acoustic guitars are usually quite difficult to play and don't sound so good. Um, if you if you got say a thousand pounds, like a couple of thousand dollars to spend on an acoustic guitar, you're going to get something that's really nice. But you know, or even maybe maybe not that extreme. Maybe a thousand dollars, you can probably get yourself a pretty decent uh, acoustic guitar. But really cheap acoustic guitars are often not very easy to play. Whereas in the cheap electric guitar department, uh, they're usually easier to play. Um, you don't even need an amplifier really. Uh, you, you can play an electric guitar acoustically. Uh, and it sounds fine usually, uh, so that would be kind of you know a recommendation. You can hear just if you not oh, just not go from a music stand, but you know, I've got an electric guitar here already. It's plugged in, but I'll just turn the 
turn the volume off so there's no electrification going on but okay you can hear that fine yourself you know and that another good thing with that if you're practicing maybe you don't want lots of people listening to you while you're learning you know if you're playing an electric guitar it's nice and quiet you know you can play uh, if you plug it into an amplifier you can put headphones on so you can have kind of whatever sound you like you get to play about with effects and stuff which is great fun i love playing about with guitar effects uh, and as a beginner that's a kind of a nice thing to, to to play about with as well get a bit of a rock sound going on and experiment with reverb and delay and those sort of things if you know um there's a lot of software around these days where you can plug your guitar directly into into a computer and then and, and play around with sounds like that as well. So there's a lot of advantages, I think, with a, with electric guitar. The disadvantage, of course, is that it's not much good to travel with. You know, uh, if you're trying to play at a party or a barbecue, um, it gets pretty difficult to uh, uh, to uh, make a noise that that's audible unless you've got an amplifier, and then you've got to take an amplifier outside. It gets a little bit more of a hassle. So um, yeah, I, th I think, uh, yeah, that's the answer. Um, uh, what is it that makes a thousand pounds, thousand dollar guitar so much better than a hundred dollars? Hey, okay. Where do you start? I'm never sure, to be completely honest, whether you get, like, a thousand dollar guitar is not going to be ten times better than a hundred dollar guitar. Often. Sometimes. <laughs> but not all the time. I think the, the the more you spend, the more refined sound you get. Let's say, I don't know, you could compare it to, I don't know, wine. You know, when you spend a thousand dollars on a bottle of wine, not that I would ever do that, um, but it's not going to be that much better than a bottle that it's not going to be a hundred times better than the ten dollar bottle unless you're a connoisseur and you really appreciate those fine things. So I think a lot of it's like that with electric guitars and, and acoustic guitars up to like a thousand dollars or maybe a couple of thousand dollars you get to that real high-end kind of instrument and and after that it's it's about cosmetics and it's about other stuff you know more refined things to do with the tone um you know i i generally recommend going second hand to be completely honest most uh well most nearly all of my guitars uh second hand i'm saying that actually most of my Acoustic guitars are from Mayton and they and, and I buy I get them directly from Mayton so they're not but most of my other instruments are uh, second hand because you save a lot of money buying second hand so um, you know uh, it, there's always that debate about um, Fender versus Squire whether a USA Strat is that much better than a Squire Strat you know and I've played some fantastic Squire guitars uh, you know and I've and I've played and owned loads of, of, of Fender USA guitars. Most of my guitars are Fender USA, not because I didn't think Squire ones were any good, but, but just, because, you know, I do this for a living, so I, I, I want to be aiming for buying the best stuff, you know, and, and uh, so I have a range of, of, of different guitars that fit different things, you know, and, and uh, if you keep the guitar bug much, you're probably going to find yourself having quite a few guitars as well, um, you know, so that's, uh, uh, that's, that's enough of, about buying guitars. So... Uh, next question is just as I've seen is starting guitar at age 30 too late not at all uh, that's yeah absolutely not uh, there's loads of people that I, I get emails all the time from people in their 60s and 70s that are starting to learn guitar you definitely don't have to start young you know in in say five, within five years if you can have do regular practice most people get to the point where they could probably go out and do a gig if they wanted to uh, you know if, if you if you and, and I, I you know need to point out there if you can do regular practice stick with a good program and you and you give it the the, the attention it deserves you know um, if you do like five minutes practice once a week then you're probably not going to be reaching that point you know um, anytime soon but so you know starting at 30 or starting at 40 or starting at 50 you know it doesn't really matter in fact I had a student um, I'm not exactly sure how old he was when he first started coming for lessons I would guess 40 um, and uh, he won't mind Ian he's, he's, and he went on he, he gave up his, his regular job went to the Guitar Institute and you know he studied with me for a while first got him to all these basic skills together went to the Guitar Institute and he's just about to graduate with a degree he's out in a band playing gigs and stuff you know so it's definitely definitely never 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 too late you know so 40s 50s whatever man just get into it and enjoy it, it, it if you wanted to be the greatest guitar player that ever lived you're probably too late at 30 
right? Because guys like Tommy Emmanuel have been practicing all day, every day from the age of six. So, you know, those guys have got a massive head start because they've been doing nothing but, you know, playing guitar for 50 years. So you're probably not going to get better than them. Um, hang on, there was a question there from a beginner question that looked like a proper beginner question. I am 12 and I'm petite, having a hard time singing over my guitar to look at the finger positioning without bending over, leaning back. Okay, good question. Oh, it's Kim again. I already answered your question, Kim. I feel bad to answer two questions there uh, from the same person, but it's a very good question, so I'm going to answer it anyway. So, Kim's question. Uh, it's, it's a bit easier on electric guitar. Actually, there's an answer for you right away, Kim. So, if you've got your guitar in a nice position like this, like up against your body, right? You, what you don't want is to be doing this, Okay. Because as soon as you do this, you, you're not going to get your fingers in a good position, right? So you, you'd be sitting there playing, and you think, oh, I need to check if my fingers are in a good spot, and they go like this. But your whole hand goes in a bad position then, and your fingers aren't going to be right, and you're going to be muting strings. So you really want to try and get into the habit of just looking over just a little bit. Not this, right? Because you're going to get yourself a sore neck and end up spending a lot of money on osteopaths or chiropractors or whatever, you know. So what I did, which I think is a really good idea, is I borrowed my dad's shaving mirror. So my dad had this little round shaving mirror with a little stand at the back. And I'd sit, I'd put it on my desk, right? And then I'd, I'd look at the shaving mirror. Now, I've just had an idea as I picked up my phone here. It's got a camera on it, hasn't it? So if you don't have a shaving mirror, because I'm guessing, Kim, if you're a young and a girl, you're probably not going to be shaving. Um, but using your phone, actually there's a message from my girlfriend asking what time I'm going to be home. I thought I told her, but anyway. Um, if you'd put the, the phone, uh, the, the internal, uh, what do you call it, the backwards facing f uh, camera on, you'd be able to set that, just rest it on a pile of books or something, you know, and rest that there and then play and you'll be able to look at exactly where your hand's doing. Yeah, that's a, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with myself. I've got myself a good new idea there. In fact, um, I'm even going to write that down. Um <laughs> Uh, phone as mirror because that's a good little solution uh, particularly on acoustic guitar when the when the the instrument is a bit bigger you know, I often see people trying really trying to strain like that and you've got to be careful you know I know you youngsters don't think about about stuff like that you know about having a bad back or what you know because it's a bit of a hassle um, from all the years I've spent playing with a and using the guitar strap I've got a you know a funny kind of lower lower neck upper back I'm not sure what you call it and uh, luckily for me, my, my missus is an osteopath, so she can fix stuff like that for me. But I, you know, would probably get expensive if uh, if I had to. Um, okay, uh, begin a question from Lionel there. When reading tabs, the number shows the, the fret, but how do you know what finger to use? Okay, that's a very good question as well. Um, usually it, it should be obvious. And if it's not obvious, particularly if it's something uh, that, uh, that I've given you, it'll tell you. Uh, there'll be another, like a neck diagram or some sort of instruction to tell you um, uh, what uh, what stuff to do. I've just seen there uh, about an intermediate a stream for intermediate players. Just stick around for half an hour, man. I'm doing an hour for beginners and then an hour of free for all, which will be intermediate and everything else. Um, and now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, tab. So uh, if you're reading a tab like on on a, 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 for a song and and there's no instruction involved and you can't see anything. It doesn't tell you what finger to use, so you just have to use your experience or a little bit of logic and go, well, there's that, that note, and then I've got to play this one. So what finger should I use for that, right? Um, you know, as you get more experience as a guitar player, it'll become a little bit more obvious. Um, so, uh, yeah, hopefully that's got your question. Um, sorry if I miss your question, by the way. I'm just kind of, when I finish a question, I'm looking to see what one I, I might be able to, 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 to read something. Um, I've got my left thumb cut off halfway due to an accident. Will that stop me in playing the guitar the proper way? So Outrider, um, it, it might stop you playing in a traditional way, but it shouldn't stop you playing at all. If, if anyone's seen there, you know, there's loads of videos around of guys playing with their feet or people, Django Reinhardt is the, the obvious example that he had his fingers burned together in a caravan fire. So he had like, you know, essentially two usable fingers. Um, but he went on to become one of the most influential jazz guitar players of all time. So, you know, um, there's a video of a guy with only one arm who, who's, who has a pick attached to a stump who plays. You know, I mean, there's, you know, I'm, I'm really ha lucky that, that I've got, you know, all of my bits in the right place. But there's not 
there's no reason to stop you, no matter what problem you've got. That you know, and I always think of back to the amount of times I hear from people, "Oh, my fingers are too fat, I can't play." It's like, dude, there's a guy with no arms playing guitar, playing great guitar. So don't give me any of this fat finger stuff, you know. So there's always a way around, you know. If you, no matter what you feel like, oh yeah, I can't do this or I can't do that or my fingers are fat or my fingers are too thin or my hands are too small or I, you know. I heard every excuse under the sun, but I've also seen loads of people with really big problems to overcome, you know, um, and, and they get on with it and they do it. You know, I've, I've taught a few pretty severely disabled people over the years and, and I, I really admire their courage in just getting on with it and just finding a way around to do it. You know, there's, there's always a way if you look for it, you know, if you you know you can maybe you have to look for alternatives like maybe you get into open tuning so or, or slide guitar where if your fingers don't work probably maybe you get into slide guitar where you're just moving your hand instead of your fingers and i mean that's a beautiful slide guitar done properly is an incredibly beautiful thing so there's always a way around so don't don't worry about um don't worry about that sort of stuff um <laughs> long fingers though question mark long fingers are good too um my dream guitar, I own all my dream guitars. I've got a few dream guitars and I own them all, but that's a good question for later on. Elixir strings are good for beginners. Yeah, Elixir strings are fine. The coated strings are generally like longer lasting. Um, like I said, I prefer the Diodario ones over the Elixir ones, but you know, what it's, it's whatever tickles your fancy really, you know. Um, uh, okay, how important is it to learn with a teacher instead of just online lessons? So, um, it depends on the teacher. So if you've got a not very good teacher, then probably my online lessons are going to be better. And I don't mean that in a in an arrogant kind of a way, but I've seen some pretty appalling teachers over the years and I've seen some pretty amazing teachers. And if you've got an amazing teacher, then that's brilliant, you know. Um, and, and, and having an in-person teacher can save you a bit of time on, on looking at, you know, the, the, the posture of your hand or if you're sitting funny or if you've got questions that you can't get answered online. Um, I do like to think that my beginner's course is pretty comprehensive because I've been doing this stuff for a long time now. I've answered hundreds of emails and hundreds of questions in, in, in you know, by email and on the forum and in, in, in things like this. So I've tried to make the, the beginner's course as, as complete and answer all of the questions that I've ever had to do with it, you know. So if you go through that and you go through it carefully and you read all the stuff, a lot of the questions that I get asked in these sort of things are, um, are uh, good. Oh, Mr. Mr. Close to you has just arrived. I've just seen... Hey, mate, how you doing? I've just... Oh, I think I did anyway. I'm just trying to set you as a moderator there, uh, Mr. Close to you. Um, thanks for coming along, Rich. Um, so, uh, uh, what if they have Parkinson's? I'd, 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 I had... Um, I actually taught a, a, a girl who had Parkinson's, actually, smart ass. Um, and, and she did really well, so, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, I have problems using a guitar pick, I always drop it. Um, so dropping guitar picks uh, is kind of normal when you're a beginner again. Um, uh, one of the things that you, part of the journey there is is um, uh, managing to hold your pick soft enough, because actually when you're holding the pick, you don't want to hold it too tight. But it's finding that right balance of holding it just tight enough not to drop it. Okay, so that's it's one of those things that uh, is a it, it's it's an experience thing, you know. Really, uh, I've I've met a lot of students over the years that have gone for stuff like trying to stick on sticky things into the pick and uh, you know or, or tape or blue tack or. But I don't really think that's the solution. I think the solution is learning how tight to uh, hold the pick. And uh, I would strongly recommend that you, you go for that approach. Um, I do find different pick materials, like the Fender plastic ones, I don't get along with. I find them personally too slippy. I like the, um, I use the, the the Justin Guitar picks that you can get on my, the Justin Guitar store are made of a thing called Grip-X, uh, which is a very grippy uh, sort of a feeling stuff, slightly porous. Um, I find that grips a lot better. You also find the Dunlop Tortex, uh, which is very similar to the grip X thing. It's a very similar kind of feeling. Um, I find that the grippiest, um, you know, it's mostly practice. It's finding out how to hold the pick is the, is the key there, more than the grippiness of the, uh, of the pick. Um, 
when should you start learning guitar? Um, whenever you feel like playing guitar, there's no age where you need to learn to play guitar. Um, as soon as you feel like playing guitar is the answer to that question. Um, uh, could you do a beginner's lesson using a loop pedal in the future? I, well, I've done a lesson on using a loop pedal, but it's not normally for beginners because beginners uh, struggle a bit for, for rhythm, usually. Not not all beginners, but most beginners really struggle on keeping a, a, a consistent beat um, and playing with the metronome. And if you want to use a looper, you one of the, the well, not one of, the key thing for, for playing with a looper uh, is, is keeping a solid beat because you have to start the looper pedal and stop the looper pedal. Um, and if you don't do that exactly right, the, the loop is, is kind of wonky. Um, so uh, what I would recommend for that is uh, uh, spending a little... It, well, check out my lesson on looping and uh, on how to use a looper. And if you can do it, then great. And if you can't, then don't worry about it. It's not... Uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, it's something that you want to spend a little bit of time continuing your practice of rhythm skills. And then, you know, when you're, you're rhythm solid enough, you should find using the looper um, a little a little easier. Um, uh, any rec book recommendation to learn harmony? Um, well, my, my theory book is called Practical Music Theory. It's available on the justinguitar.com. I don't want to, I always feel like, well, I hate doing my own salesy thing. I find it a bit creepy, but I think I've got a good theory book. It's a lot of really good reviews, so you might want to check that out. Um, my guitar is always out of tune. Uh, what should I do? Um, uh, buy a tuner would be definitely the first step there. Learning to tune your guitar is a good idea. Um, if your guitar's going out of tune a lot, it might have some problems with... Um, uh, either with the tuning pegs, the, the, these things might be wonky. Uh, there could be problems with the stability of the guitar. You might need to take the guitar basically to a guitar store and have them have a look at it and, and let you know um, if there's something wrong with the instrument or, or um, what there is that you can do to, to maybe to try and fix it. Um, that's what I would recommend. Uh, who is my teacher? Well, I don't really have a teacher. Um, well, I don't have a teacher at all, really. I, 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 I seek advice from friends. So uh, I've got lots of friends that, that I know that are, that are better than me at certain things. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm always, uh, well, not always. If I've got a problem with something, I'd ask them. So if I've got a question about jazz, I might ask uh, my friend Dario, or I might ask Mike Outram or uh, Les Wise. You know, they're the main things that I do. Um, you know, but but generally, I think at, at, at the point, the plate where I'm at, um, I, I, I'm, I'm able to kind of teach myself stuff because music's really about sound. So if you want to learn about something, if I want to learn about whatever, I, I listen to it and then I figure out how to do it by listening. And then I analyze it because I understand how harmony works and, and, and theory. So I can analyze the things that I'm listening to or learning or transcribing. And then... Um, from that, I can kind of teach myself to understand those new things. So I don't really have a teacher, but I, that's not to say I know everything. I, uh, I, you know, I'm always learning, uh, but I tend to learn by listening to music that I want to learn from. That's kind of how it works for me. Um, uh, okay, I, there was a question about tuning again, but I think I just answered that. Um, I think I answered that one. Okay, um, what age did I start to play guitar? I was very young, six or seven or something. On a, I think I had a ukulele, then a classical guitar. Uh, started gigging and teaching when I was about 12. So I've been playing for quite a while. Um, guitar tuner app is great for tuning and it's free. That's fine. If you've got a little bit of money to spend, the tuning app that I use is called the Peterson Strobo Stomp. Stro not Strobo Stomp. I can't remember what it's called. It's by Peterson though. It's called iStrobo Soft. It looks like that. I was even using it just before we came on. It's like a strobe tuner. Very, very accurate. Um, I very much like Peterson tuners. I've been using Peterson tuners for quite a long time. Um, what do I think of Rocksmith? Um, I think that uh, Rocksmith is a fun game. Uh, a fun guitar-related game, but I don't really think all of the hype about it being the best way to learn guitar and all of that sort of stuff is true. 
I think that's just marketing and good on them because that's what I would say if I had a game like that as well. Um, I think it's got some cool things, but I think there's a lot of problems with it. I went and checked it out. I went and actually met the Rocksmith guys uh, at their place in San Francisco, and they were really cool guys. And it is a cool game, man. It's a really cool game, but I'm not sure it's... Uh, if you want to learn to play guitar, just playing guitar using kind of more traditional methods, I think is the probably a better method to become a guitar player. You know, I, I think most of us want to learn guitar... Uh, like our heroes are not modern most and, and, and maybe that's changing I'm not sure but like the guys that I really like are like Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page and Jimi Hendrix and Robin Ford and Larry Carlton and what you know those those guys Eric Johnson whatever that that, that circle of incredible guitar players that I would like to emulate and, and, and be like and, and learn from um, uh, they learned by listening they didn't learn by Rocksmith. So maybe in like a hundred years time, there's going to be some incredible guitar players around who learn via Rocksmith, but that hasn't happened yet. And I'm, I question whether that's ever going to happen really might do, but you know, the, the, the real classic guitar stuff that we all really love is done in a more traditional way by hearing and by learning language. And, and, you know, um, I learn off Eric Clapton by learning his licks and stealing his licks and figuring out how to do them. And, and, you know, I think that's a really good, process you know and I, I try to pass on stuff for you guys that will help you continue that journey you know I, I, I know I don't do it all the time but I do talk a lot about ear training and how important it is to listen and you know interval ear training and transcribing and that sort of stuff it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal man I, I don't I'm not just mucking around when I talk about that stuff I really mean that, that that's you know that's the real true way of the true path for learning music is by listening and learning to transcribe and all of that sort of stuff um so we're still trying to do um uh beginnery stuff if we can please guys in, in you know in in 20 minutes i'm going to start the open counseling in which we can uh, we can talk about whatever stuff more fancy stuff but um what is the biggest do not do the biggest do not do is um Don't ignore rhythm, okay? Rhythm is the key. When you're a beginner, especially for beginners, but for everyone at every level, rhythm is the most important thing that there is, by far. If you play dodgy chords, but keep the rhythm really good, people can sing along and they can still feel it. Whereas if you, um, if, if you play good chords with a bad rhythm, it sounds terrible, really terrible. Now, I, I, done this quite a few times on live streams and, and in, in lessons and stuff so i'll just switch to acoustic guitar because it's easy for that but if i'm if i'm playing something and i play the chords a bit wrong so if i keep the rhythm good okay it's, it's fine you know you get not perfect i was definitely wonky on the, some of those chords deliberately but if i chose to uh make the chords good at the expense of the rhythm and i went <laughs> you can hear it's just like oh man it's like it's lost it it's lost the musicality it's lost the, the really important stuff has disappeared right so it's not really a don't do but a a do do is pay attention to the rhythm and, and your timing and your strumming and all that stuff. That's really, really, that's that's a really big, big, big deal. Um, okay, I've got some questions I can see about jazz guitar players. That's again, we're trying to stick with the beginner stuff, man. Just 20 more minutes and then we can talk about jazz and fancy stuff. Um, uh, is it pre better to practice scales or chords? Well, I, I think in my beginner's course, I, I lay out a nice program. Uh, which is pretty much all chords at the beginning and then a little bit of scale just to kind of get your fingers moving a little bit. But it, definitely chords and rhythm is where you want to be for a beginner guitar player because if, if if you met somebody and you said, you know, I play guitar and, and you were at a barbecue or whatever and, and at a party and they said, oh, you play guitar here, what, what can you play? And you went, I can do this. <laughs> you know, no one's going to be very impressed with that. 
that's not that's not where it's at, man, at all. You know, whereas if you can play some some chords and you can go. <laughs> Whatever, you know, and you can play a song, well, hey, then we're getting somewhere, right? That's 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 cool. People will sing along, they can appreciate that it's musical, you know. So really for beginners it's all about rhythm uh and, and chords. That's that's it. That's that's really um where you want. Um strumming with fingers, there's an interesting beginner question. Okay, so if you don't like using a pick and you want to use your fingers, um you can totally use fingers for strumming. Um, I often use fingers for strumming just because I think it sounds nicer sometimes because you can hear picks can be a bit harsh if I use just my thumb it's really mellow all of a sudden so if I was playing this kind of thing you know maybe I want it a bit softer so I'm just using I'm just using my thumb the outside of my thumb and I'm just using down strokes you can do up strokes the thumb as well it's not it's a little bit more difficult to, to do upstrokes with the thumb if you want to use your first finger as well you can just use the tip of your finger and go up and down it just it's totally fine to do that for me it sounds a bit like a pick uh, because I have fake plastic fingernails uh, for any of you that didn't know that um, so if I strum like that with my finger it just sounds like I'm using a pick because my fingernail's plastic and the pick's plastic. So, um, but if you you know if you don't have a, a a fake plastic nail, it'll be a different texture again to the pick, which you might like or you might choose. So, um, yeah, it's totally fine to do that. I think it's better, personally. My personal opinion would be that if you're a beginner guitar player, it'd be better to learn to use a pick and then put the pick away later. So even if you're like a massive fan of Martin Offler or Jeff Beck or or whatever you know whoever finger style guitar player or you really want to play like you know the folk you know you you like that sort of finger style thing if you want to do that great but i recommend still if you're a beginner learning to use a pick first right because it's a it's a very useful skill to have and then at least you can decide later on that you choose to use fingers rather than just using fingers because that's kind of where you fell and you happen to stay there because it was a bit easier. I always think, you know, you should try and do things that you choose to do rather than doing the thing that was easy. I think generally as a life rule, we should aim for things and try and do that and not just always go the easy way, you know, because there's often good things to be had with a little bit of effort in life, generally, I feel like. Um, warming up before practicing. Okay, there's an interesting uh, question. Um, I don't warm up uh, before I play. In fact, before I started the little stream today, I hadn't touched a guitar all day. I'd been working on some stuff on the website. Um, so for me, warming up when I was just playing, I played at the beginning of this stuff. You know, I'll just play, you know. I'll play some licks and stuff. Um, if I'm doing a, a concert, like a proper show where I have to be switched on a bit or I've got a session on, uh, you know, where I really I want to be playing well straight away. Then I'd, I'd tend to just play for half an hour, an hour first, roughly in the style of the thing I was going to do, but not try and do anything, excuse me, too complicated at the beginning. Because, you know, I don't, you don't want to launch into doing the hardest technical stuff that you can. You're probably going to hurt yourself. So my advice would be if you when you start, just start simple and don't push yourself into doing anything crazy at the beginning. Um, if you really want to do a little warm up -y sort of thing, then you could play a scale or something if you like, or play some chords. But really, I like just playing rather than having a set warm up thing. And I know um, most of the great guitar players that I've had the pleasure to speak to, like Tommy Emmanuel and Martin Taylor or whatever, you know, the, the, the serious guys, they don't tend to have a, a warm up routine. They just play for a bit. And I think that's a that's a nice um, approach. Um, can anyone learn how to sing? Well, I'm probably a good example of that because I don't really think I'm a very good singer at all, but I've been learning to sing uh, for the last 10 or 15 years or something, and it's kind of going okay. I, I can occasionally sing a song now and the cat doesn't run away. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, yeah, you can definitely learn to sing, and, and probably the best way of learning to sing is to, to sing. It's just to do it as much as you can and, and um, 
you know th there are definitely some exercises uh, there's some on my website in the ear training section um, and funnily enough to just today I was thinking I really should get around to doing a basic singing course even though I don't consider myself much of a singer I've, I've definitely improved a lot so therefore I can tr try and share with you the things that I've done that that help me improve um, it's just stuff like singing along with scales you know is really helpful definitely interval ear training is really good for your ear because you start to learn to listen to intervals of stuff and that's what singing is you're singing from one note to another note so if you're doing interval ear training um, you know you're going to develop your ear as well so I don't highly recommend uh, doing that as well so um, uh, let me see if I can uh, figure that out um, seems to be a few swearers in here I don't know if the, the moderators uh, seeing any of that and if the me making the moderators work there but uh close or uh or dj if you if you can uh block and ban those people that are just mindlessly swearing for no reason that would be grand um uh, i have met tommy emmanuel but let's talk about him a little bit later i did let's sing at the same time can you talk a bit about it like how do you figure out chord changes i'm struggling with that um Okay, so this was about singing and playing at the same time. How do I figure out chord changes? Well, f figuring out the chord changes is separate to figuring out the singing part. And uh, the, you know, I've got a whole lesson on a, a ten-step program uh, for learning to sing and play at the same time. But basically, you need to be able to sing and play separately before you start trying to put them together. That's how what I think. So if you're struggling with your rhythm and you can't play a song and you're struggling with the melody and you can't sing in tune, trying to do those two things at the same time is a recipe for disaster, right? So you definitely don't want to be going there. So make sure that you can play a song confidently and sing a song confidently before you start trying to put it together. And remember that one of the things has to be automated. Usually it's the guitar. So you want to be able to play the guitar and not have to think about the strumming or where the chords change. Um, a good tester for that that I use is, is playing and talking. So if I can sit there and play a song, I kind of have to think about it now because it's not really an actual song. Okay. So now I've, I've chosen the song just in my mind, and now I can just sit there and play that song, and I can talk to you about whatever I could talk about, I don't know, chess strategy or whatever random stuff, and I know that those chords are just going to keep on going along. You know, I don't really have to pay them any attention. They're just going to keep doing it. And, and, and to be able to do that, that means I can then concentrate on the singing, you know. Um, so I think that's kind of where it, it, it wants to get to. So it's not like um, there. Um, I don't seem to have mod powers close to you. Doesn't have mod powers yet. Okay, I'm trying, mate. It, it. There's a thing here that says at the, at the end. Sorry, just give me one second. Set user as moderator. I'm trying, mate. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. Set user as moderator. Hmm. I don't know whether that's, that's okay. We'll have to figure that out um, for the next time. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that's not. Um, okay, how long are your strings supposed to last? It depends on the strings. Um, if you use coated strings, um, then uh, they tend to last a lot longer than non-coated strings. You can kind of think of the coating a bit like Teflon on your fry pan. It lets the kind of the dirt and the gunk and stuff just fall off the strings, whereas the other strings will absorb it and they'll go a bit rusty. So, um, and it depends on how much you play. Um, these strings have been on this guitar for maybe a month, which is quite a long time for me, but I haven't been playing this guitar much. It's been in the case. Uh, they're starting to go rusty. In fact, I just did a lesson on this. I've just remembered. There's a Q, if you go to the Q&A section of my website, there's a lesson, how do you know when to change strings? It's basically, I, I run my fingernail underneath the string like that, and then I look under there, and if there's loads of black gunk, um, then uh, I change. I change strings. So, um, yeah. That's about that. Beginner question. When switching to D chord, is up strum open or fretted upstrum open or fretted i don't understand your question richard please try again sorry mate um how long does it take to get chord changes clean well um it depends on how much you practice basically um if you're going to do kind of five minutes a day um well no because it depends it for most people it would be a few months to get the basic chords 
uh, clean because of course it depends on what the chords are and how complicated the chords are and as you're learning new chords those new chords aren't going to be as clean excuse me as the chords that you learned ages ago so um, yeah that's it I can't really answer that question man but a few months probably uh, recommendations on strings to buy uh, go on the the Justin guitar store dot com there's the strings that I recommend, which are Dear Dario strings, and there's the, the, the few strings that I personally use uh, up there, so you can check that out. Uh, what do I think of Guitar Pro software worth buying? Yes, I really like Guitar Pro software. Uh, it's really good uh, program. I use it quite regularly. In fact, I did a blog uh, for Guitar Pro uh, about a couple of weeks ago. So if you go on the Guitar Pro website and you click on the blog, there's a lesson about how to incorporate blues rhythm and blues lead. I think it's a very good lesson, actually, even if I do say so myself. I want to like tooting my own trumpet, but it's a good lesson and it teaches you how to do the, that link. Uh, can I make bass guitar lessons? Well, one day, um, I have a bass right behind me. In fact, you can just see it poking out my shoulder. Um, uh, my new Fender Jazz bass, which is lovely. Um, but... Uh, I've got other things that I need to get done on the guitar site first. I've got a really massive update uh, coming up soon for the guitar uh, for guitar players um, to do with ear training and transcribing and and and, and technique and and it's it's really good. I'm I'm I'm, I'm very excited about it. In fact, I, I was working on it all day today for like eight hours or something, and um, I'm I'm fully committed to this being really exciting update. Um, so. Uh, um, uh, why won't you sell your lessons one by one? The songs of your beginner has such variety. There's only about fifty percent relevant. Um, I can't uh, sell. I mean, I'm assuming you don't mean less. The, the videos are all free, so they're not for sale. I guess you're talking about the songbooks. The reason I can't sell the songs individually from the songbooks is because the publishers won't let me sell them digitally. Okay, so I'm I'm with a publisher, but they have a relationship with the record label publishers. Okay, like the uh, Hosey, I'm just picking on him for no reason, but uh, his songs are published by somebody. I don't know who it is actually for him. Let's say it's EMI. I don't know. Um, and EMI won't let me sell individual versions of songs to download, right? I can only sell it as part of a physical book or a, a complete book through iTunes. So it's not me not wanting to, it's me not being able to do to do with legal restrictions. Um have I ever met Marty from Guitar Jams? Yes, I have met Marty. We've made a DVD together, which is available on my site. And there's loads of videos of us jamming. So go and check it out. Um, okay, tips on improvising that for a little bit later. Jazz lessons. What the hell is wrong with you, Flabber? Uh, I don't know what that means. Okay, any more beginner's questions? Or are we out of the way? Um, um, okay. Guys, go for some beginners um, stuff if you've got. Um, my girlfriend plays guitar. Yes, she does. Uh, not much and not very often, although I'm trying to get her to play a little bit more <laughs> than she has. When will I be back on stage? Well, interesting, one of my big uh, New Year's resolutions this year is to put together a trio. So I want to put together a guitar trio. I'm hoping to have the band sorted by the end of this month. That's part of my goal setting uh, because I want to be out uh, back out again playing regularly before the end of the year um so uh I, it's been a long time since i've been out gigging long long time years so i need to um rectify that because i miss it so i'm trying to put together a, a trio um, um is there a particular guitar that works well for people with short stubby fingers yes a six string guitar or a bass no i'm, I'm just joking just any guitar man just don't get one go to a guitar store and you'll see that some of them have got the strings really close together some of them have got the strings wider apart if you've got fat fingers you probably don't want to go for the one with the really narrow neck right just go and play a few and, and see um foot tapping important yes very very important um uh Yes, uh, uh, tapping your foot is one of the key elements for uh, keeping yourself in time. It is possible to do it without it, but 9 out of 10 or 99 out of 100 students that have, have learned guitar with me, that have learned using foot tapping, um, have done really well with it. So I, I, I strongly recommend that you, you learn to tap your foot on the beat. There's plenty of lessons, again, as part of the beginner's course. Um, so, uh, yeah, that would be... Um, would be really good. When am I finishing the beginner stuff? Is going to be in about five minutes. 
Um, so five minutes more on beginner stuff. Um, when I switch chords, I keep hearing my fingers running over the strings. I could lift my fingers higher, but then I don't have the necessary speed in switching chords. What do you suggest? Hear my hear running over the strings. Oh, that's fine. If you're just talking about like, like a little scratchy sound, don't worry about it. You you won't hear it in the mix. You're... There. I'm kind of trying to exaggerate it now, but it, you know, don't worry about it. It'll, it'll, it'll kind of disappear as you get better. You'll learn exactly how much you have to press on the string to keep the string quiet without it ringing out and to give you the speed. A lot of these things, it's it's really, I, can, I, under, I totally understand the frustration for beginners that um, uh, it seems like so many things aren't right that you don't know how to fix. And if you ask someone like me how to fix it, they say practice. But that's not an answer that I wanted to you, that you want to hear that I would want to hear either. But there are loads of things that kind of just happen by themselves. It's really really interesting. Like a lot of the stuff that I teach you guys is not stuff that I was ever taught. You know, it just happened. You know, learning how to mute the strings or how to play a funk groove or how to keep my hand moving all the time. I'd, it, it wasn't like somebody showed me that stuff. You just it just happened, and. Uh, a lot of those things, if you think about it too much, it becomes a problem and it can actually make it worse by thinking about it too much because um, you're kind of focusing yourself on, on, on something. So um, I think it's pretty important to, um, you know, to, to, to let things happen just to keep practicing. You know, I really work a lot. I, I, I'm, I've been very dedicated to the courses on my site for a long time now and I'm, I, I tweak them a lot to try and make them as good as possible you know so I'm hoping that if you follow the program that you'll kind of get to a good place you know um, that's the thing that's what I think um, God throat is getting really knackered what's the time now okay it's it's 658 I'm gonna have a, a, a one minute break um, did I, I don't think I bought a bottle of water with me but there's a bottle of water in the car okay guys uh, moderators or whoever's still here can you let people know that I'm still here I just my throat's getting really dry and I need to get a drink basically so uh, uh, I'll be back in as long as it takes me to run out to the car park and get a bottle of water out of my car and come back okay so um, just bear with me a minute and if any of you have a guitar like that you don't ever leave it sitting in a chair that's really bad um, 